What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Supreme Decisions Legal Minute Podcast, and I am your host, Supreme Decisions. Well, today, I'm actually going to do something that I told you guys I'm going to start getting into more, and that's the Red Pill Diaries, because remember, the only thing I'm offering you is the truth, nothing more. What happens here is I'm going to give you kind of a reading, because today, I want to talk about something. One of my favorite movies that I like to actually watch with my son is Liar Liar. Now, the thing I like about Liar Liar is pretty much the overacting of Jim Carrey, where he just just he's just extra on everything. But the context of it is the understanding, because there's one line where you say, "The truth shall set you free." He did all the legalese and he did everything they could. But the one thing that actually separated him and allowed him to get his client to come home was the truth. The reason why, to me, that was important and that was one of the things that was the light, there was another scene. And the scene was, what color is the pet? What color is the pen. He said, the pen is blue. Now, what does Liar Liar have to do with a red pill die? My question to you in this episode is, what color is the line? Because today, I'm giving this to everybody, but I'm talking to police officers in particular. Because a lot of times we're looking at things and even Antonio Brown, there's no such thing as racism in America anymore. Kanye West, slavery was a choice until you got context. Then you understood the deeper nuances of his Vocalizing slavery is a choice, not was. And we understand today there are certain issues that plague our society, which come up, hell, for the most part, not even knowingly when, that we're interacting in. And when that comes up, it brings me to Herb Robinson, he's a 30-year vet of the Kansas City Police Officer, Police Department. He is a detective. He was pulled over by Cole Moldier and Marcos Olivias. Now, one of the reasons I'm asking what color is the line, one of the reasons why I'm speaking on the nuances of racism, it's the understanding of the program. When Amber Ruffin did a show that I did a play on, which was Copaganda, she explained not only the nuances, but the actualities of the programming that goes into us believing police officers are good people. That's a ongoing thing that they're doing is a conscious effort that, you know, the morality of murder, police are the good guys. And we're making excuses for them. Now, what happens when they're not? Herb Robinson was working. He was in full uniform. He was in a police vehicle. Had police tags. He was pulled over by Cole Modier, Marcos Olivius. Now, I did that deliberately because one of the things I say is oftentimes people take it as exaggeration. But most of us have no real context of who it is we are angry with 
or should be angry with. The reason why I'm saying their name is I'm from the generation of Tupac. Tupac wrote a song and he kept stating it. It's the realest thing I've ever wrote. This be the realest verse I ever spoke. While singing that, he's in the background saying, say their name. Say their name. What happens is when you start pointing out the things that are bad, the things that are corrupted, the things that are causing confusion, the thing that is actually most detrimental to even the good cops, it forces the change here. And for those that can't see me, I'm pointing at my brain. Because again, you hear me talk about the matrix. It's not the spoon that bends, it's our mind. Good and evil rest in the decision making of the mind. That's what I'm offering you, because I'm offering you the truth, nothing more. It's up to you to walk through the door. When you look at Cole Modier and Marcos Olivia pulling over, a police officer that's dark skinned, who's in a in uniform, who's in a police car, who is not breaking the law. The question is, what color is the line? Because I say this all the time. They're using stock language. They don't know how to articulate. Why? Because Jordan B. Prince says these people are not the most intelligent. All they do is follow orders. Now, While in uniform, while in a police car, being pulled over, not because he was doing anything wrong, not because there was a report of someone stealing a police car. They pull him over and ask him, where are you going? What you doing? He's like, dude, I'm at work. He's then berated by Cole Modier and Marcos Olivius. He's berated. He's, well, you're a dumbass. But they're the ones who actually did something dumb. They then proceeded to do what I say they always do. Why? Because they can't articulate. They're given stock language because they can't think for themselves. They then proceed to lie and misrepresent what happened during the stop. Forgetting their body cameras began recording 30 seconds after the stop began, and both officers are heard lying and attempting to be raped. You know, because again, I'm going to bring up Kevin, Officer Kelvin Dangle. You know, because they're professionals, they're trained to be professionals. They're trained to de-escalate the situation. What was their professionalism? If they were de-escalating, why are they berating a fellow officer? What color is the line? Because Modir and Olivius were the aggressors. Why? They can't say they were in fear for their life because he is wearing the same uniform they are. They can't say he was being obnoxious because he asked them why did they pull them pull him over? You know, because Terry B. Ohio states they must be able to articulate. So even a cop asking another cop to do a job properly, he's the problem. What color is the line? Chief Eddie Simmons, while in a police truck and showing his badge, he asked why officers on the scene were not performing the totality of circumstances. He had an issue. 
Officer Eddie Simmons had an issue. He was on the highway. And while on the highway, he makes a phone call to 911, which is not the emergency line, but he makes a call into 911 to their dispatch line to get note, hey, this guy is doing something. Might want to get someone out here to check. Well, this guy then makes a frantic 911 call and says, oh, he's holding a gun out the window. He's doing all this stuff while then cutting off and then going back and following Andy Simmons. Andy Simmons pulls into a place with cameras. Why? Because, again, Andy Simmons is training his officers to be transparent. Andy Simmons is attempting to change culture. He's attempting to change perception of police officers. Yet, when encountered by subordinates and counterparts, he's asking them, why they aren't doing their job properly. Why did they let the white man go? Because, oh yes, Eddie Simmons has dark skin. Everyone there that came onto the call was not. What color is the line? One officer told him, doing a totality of circumstances, that wasn't even relevant. Yet, it's a requirement for each and every call because in order to make a conscious decision to exercise officer discretion, you got to know what the hell's going on. How are you going to make a decision without being fully informed of what the situation is? I'm going to say that again. How are you going to make a informed decision when you don't know what the entire situation is? But again, they're doing what they're trained to do. It's irrelevant simply because they're not trained to solve crimes. But here's my question again, Officer Kevin Dingle. What was their professionalism? What was their training at to do what they're required to do of the totality of circumstances? Because it is a requirement of law. Because what if you run into someone such as myself that is knowledgeable? Because you need someone on your team that knows the game and knows how to play it. What happens when you run into that person? Because the simple fact they did not go through the totality of circumstances, meaning their police reports are lies. And incomplete at best, even if they don't lie, it's incomplete. What happens if we're standing in front of a judge what happened if that stop then goes beyond 19 minutes? See the lies you've been told? When I say they're not trained properly, they're not even trained to follow law. They're not trained to solve cases. They are trained as attack dogs. I'm going to say that one more time. They're trained as attack dogs. I always tell people the one thing that I actually get around and do whatever is the simple fact I, I think everybody's stupid. That's how I approach every situation. I often think every police officer that I encounter is an idiot. Why? Because I allow the intelligence to be the surprise. Because whenever I look at these books, I listen to these police officers, even I'm going to get into the one, because I'm actually going to do a short video on this one, where the police chief, why this is, and this is why you can hold the, the captains, the, these people that speak on behalf, these police lovers, how you have someone speak on their behalf that wasn't on the scene. There was a stop. There was a Delaware lacrosse team 
a female lacrosse team that was stopped in Georgia, South Georgia. I can't believe talk about how bad Georgia is. They were stopped. One officer says, hey, you know, it was an illegal lane change, but we, we're probably going to find some weed. He then proceeds to lie to these children. And I do mean the way I just said that because they're because again, if Ezekiel Ella can be 23 years old and he's oh well well he he he's he's still a kid he's only 23. These young ladies aren't graduated from college yet, so they're still kids. They have children's mentality still, and then they're told they have to go through the bags. Supervisor who wasn't there states. Well, no one went through their bags, yet we got body camera video that says otherwise. We have actual film from the kids that were filming it that says otherwise. So he's no longer covered because they didn't have consent or probable cause to go through those bags. But they threw him out there. He's now liable for those words. He's liable for their actions. What color is the line? Because the whole thing is when you begin to fight back or push back against that line, they ask you, well, whose side are you on? I thought you were protecting the people. I'm on the side of the because that's what we're all sworn to do. Just like I look, well, I work for the police department. I don't work for the people, yet your oath says otherwise. You know, the one that you swore to God you held your hand up to, that, that says otherwise. But what color is the line? Because you are loyal to who? Because the exact second that something happens, Nobody has anything to say. I wonder why. You don't have that protection anymore. I wonder why. Then we go to Officer Jackson. Let me, let me, let me correct that. Federal Officer Jackson. Guess why she was pulled over multiple times? She was pulled over driving through, you guessed it, Georgia. Alabama and Georgia. She made eye contact four times. Not because she's speeding, not because she's switching the illegal lane change as one officer stated, not because her tent was too dark. Yet, this officer was pulled over multiple times for making eye contact. What color is the line? St. Louis officer was shot by a white officer while speaking to police officers. Let me give you this story because I actually, when I first read it, it was, it was sad, but it was also hilarious because there was a young man who had fled the scene of a robbery. He had taken a shot at police officers. Well, He's got that getting away from the cop speed, apparently. Well, in the midst of going through a residential neighborhood, an off-duty officer, dark skin, hears the gunshot. He sees the guy running through his yard. The guy pulls the gun on him. He pulls out his service pistol, takes a shot. Bah! Does not hit the suspect. As he's doing that, two other officers pull up on the scene. He puts his hands in the air. Officers draw down on him. And he says, I am a police officer. My badge is here. They pick him up off the ground while he's speaking to an officer. A third officer shows up on the scene without provocation. No gun in hand. The gun is in his waistband. He's standing Within feet of another police officer, he is then shot by this third officer who stated he was in fear for his life, yet no one had guns out. 
Say that one more time. A man that was standing, speaking with officers. You know, he was complying. He wasn't irrational. He wasn't belligerent. He wasn't fighting back. He wasn't even talking back. He was speaking calmly to another officer who had already shown up on the scene and had already assessed the situation, who had already put up his gun. Third officer pulls up on the scene and shoots him. The department then put him on leave because he decided to say, hey, this guy owes me an apology at least. He didn't kill me, but I, I, he owes me something. What color is the line? Those officers that were on the scene initially left the officer who shot him out of their reports. When the suspect was caught, they deliberately left the officer who shot him out of the media. What color is the line? If they're willing to hide a white counterpart from their own who did a deliberately negligent act and won't even issue an apology to the person that they call their brother, what color is the line? During the Derek Chauvin trial, I actually said this on Angry Soccer Mom's show. Three St. Louis officers who had beaten a black counterpart, dark skin. It was the most amazing thing. They obstructed justice, lied in their state. You know, there's a pattern going on here, right? Three police officers beat up a black police officer. They lied about what they did. They lied at the grand jury and they obstructed justice because they hid evidence of beating one of their own. Now, during the federal trial, during this trial, the most amazing thing happened. There was no coverage. Nobody knew the trial was even going on. Why? Because they was like, look here, look here, look here. Don't look at the actual trick. We're going to give you Derek Chauvin. We're not going to give you these three that did absolute wrong. There was proof they obstructed justice. There was proof they lied in their statements. It was proof that they lied during the grand jury. Why? Because it was on video. You know, the thing that Arizona doesn't want anybody to do. They don't want any videotape, even though they used the videotape of a bystander because it was better quality and had a better anger that acquitted the officers of wrongdoing. But they don't want you doing it anyway. You know, because if you're videotaping it, they can't manipulate it. They don't have control of it. Because if they don't have control of it, they can't spin the story because they're the good guy. But during this, they acquitted these three officers. Why? They were asked directly, why did you beat him? Was he resisting arrest? Each officer said no. Was he committing a crime? No. Was he tearing up anything? No. Why did you beat him? Because he was there. What color is the line? Because he's a cop too. I keep asking this question, but nobody can answer that. Because, again, you'll tell me, blue lives matter. What are you, a smurf? Because those are the only blue I know because you're putting on a uniform. When you take that uniform off, are you still blue? Because B.B. King was blue. Understand the context. B.B. King didn't desecrate the American flag. But now we're going to go into some relevance. Because at the end of the day, 
when I talk about putting their character on, on trial. The more I talk about it, the more I'm showing you, the more it is that it sounds like the system is broken in its current state for what they say, what they want us to believe it is. It's a system of justice for who? They don't even protect themselves. Although they'll want you to believe being a police officer is dangerous. It's only dangerous or detrimental because of bad policing. You never heard me yell, defund the police, defund the police, because no, I actually think it's something that's needed. I think police officers are needed when they are doing it properly. When you're doing the job properly, I think you're needed. Just like I think the person doing fries at McDonald's, they're needed because I need my fries hot. I need them salted properly. But when you have someone that's not doing it properly, why are they even working fries? If you can't add up money, why are you working the register? If you can't be articulate or charismatic, why are you at the drive through We're putting these people as deities, people that are infallible. We're putting these people on pedestals, and then we're saying they can do no wrong while at the same time excusing their murders and making excuses for their bad behavior. It's just a few. I can give you 40 podcasts right now on just a few. I can give you 40 podcasts on just officers planting evidence, even though they're worried about their livelihood and health. At least that's what they're telling us. I could give you officers that are planting evidence. But again, I thought they were to get the bad guys, not be the bad guys. Well, let me let me let me move. Police officer Mel Proctor tased ordered to the ground. Pepper sprayed, handcuffed, and arrested officers Stephen Alexander. That's a mouthful to say. Officer Mel Proctor. Tased. Ordered to the ground. Pepper sprayed, handcuffed, and arrested. Officer Stephen Alexander. While walking and carrying groceries in full uniform. Maybe maybe I'm not catching this. Because, again, Officer Mel Proctor, tased, ordered to the ground, pepper spray, handcuffed, and arrested Officer Stephen Alexander while walking and carrying groceries in full uniform. I guess he thought he was dangerous because, you know, I have that same exact feeling whenever I see cops. I think they are dangerous. I think they have an inability to listen or cooperate. I think they have an inability to actually perform their job properly. Mel Proctor thought the exact same thing when he saw another police officer. These three St. Louis officers thought the exact same thing when they saw another police officer. The St. Louis officer thought the same thing when he shot another police officer. Officer Jackson had that same feeling when she saw another police officer. Eddie Simmons was taken as that same action when he was seen by other police officers. Cole Maudier, Marcos Olivius, thought the exact same thing when they saw another police officer. But here's the thing. Mel Proctor didn't stop there. To justify this level of incompetency, Mel Proctor lied in his report. What color is the line? Now, I want you to I'm, 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 take, a, take a hold right there. I'm not sure if you're catching this. 
they have the inability to tell the truth. Most of these are trained liars. They're actually, it's okay for them to lie to you. It's okay for them to manipulate you, but yet they're the good guys. Why would they lie to you or about you? Why wouldn't they when they're lying on each other? When they're manipulating each other, they have a culture of this. All these are in different places. It's amazing the uniformity because all of these are taking place all across this country. It's not just one state. However, Georgia could give me plenty to write about, could give me plenty to talk about, could give me plenty to show, but I'm going all over the country because I want you to understand it's not just one place. These are not isolated incidents. These are culturized, cultivated. These are the things that are being nurtured and produced. These are the things when you hear people complaining about. These are the questions that are being asked. Why? What color is the line? If I can't reprimand my brother, do I really love them? If I'm putting on that suit and it doesn't represent integrity, courage, or strength, why am I putting it on? Why am I asking others to accept me putting it on? Why am I asking others to respect me when I put it on? If my actions do not coincide with what it's supposed to represent. Notice I used the word supposed to because, again, they're doing what they're trained to do. Because if you notice, all of them lied. All of them deliberately covered up their actions because nobody's taught to take responsibility for their actions. Even given an excuse. Because even whenever you looked at Casey White, they were escaping. The jailer actually had several built-in excuses. Well, maybe she was coerced. Well, maybe he had threatened her. Maybe she put in the paperwork three days prior, which was Tuesday, and had a dry run that day she put the paperwork in. And then she set up everything down the street so that way they could, oh, but then that would make her culpable. Do you see the lies you've been told? Because if you make sure she accepts responsibility, that lays the negligence on everyone around her. Because now every case that she comes involved with or was involved with, every complaint that was made up, now that has to be taken seriously. Now it has to be taken seriously. Now it has to be taken seriously. So whenever I say these cops' names, because most of them are still working. Any interaction they have, why are you not fighting it? They're known liars. If they're put on the stand, it's an automatic dismissal because the DA is now putting a known liar on the stand. This is why they don't want a, a countrywide Brady list. This is why they fight so hard to say, okay, well, well we're going to get rid of records of uh, police complaints in 60 days. You don't even have to be taken to court for 90. So now we don't have records for 90 days, but they're getting destroyed. Again, you see the lies you've been told? Because when I speak, oh I'm, oh, I'm hating cops. Why is it I'm not hating bad police? Why am I ha not hating the encouragement a fucker. Why, why, why is that not an option? It's only one option. Why is that it? Why is it not multiple choice? Why can I not have other ideas? Why can I not have other opinions of it? Why can I not see a world differently from what they're telling me it is? See the trick over here? See the lies you've been told? I want to make sure you understand what this is.